Welcome on back to Skippers today. We are going to begin must draft week. We're going to go through all the position groups. So today we are doing three must draft starting pitchers. Tomorrow we will do infielders and then Wednesday we will have outfielders. Don't forget to subscribe as we continue to get you ready for your fantasy baseball drafts. The first must draft player is going to be Tarek Skubal of the Tigers. He had a preseason ADP of 49. Not too sure where it's at now. It's probably rising, but last season seven and three. 2.8 ERA, 102 strikeouts, a whip of 0.90 in 80 and a thirds innings pitched. I've talked about him a ton this offseason, even uh, getting my AL Cy Young pick. And no one besides maybe the second player on this list has seen more steam than Scooble this offseason. And I think it's well deserved. When he came back from his injury at the end of the 2023 season, Scooble did things that not many others had done thanks to a big jump in his velocity. And if you watched the spring standouts video from last week, you already know this stat. But last week, Eric Cross tweeted pitchers in the 21st century to have a season with minimum 80 innings pitched. So that got Scooble in on this with an ERA under three whip under one, walk percentage under 5%, and a strikeout percentage above 32%. Here are all the pitchers. Scooble in 2023, DeGrom in 2021, Verlander in 19 and 18, Corey Kluber in 17, Clayton Kershaw 2015, and Pedro Martinez in 2000. That is a pretty uh, damn good group of pitchers to be lumped in with. Scooble's four-seam fastball velocity averaged 95.8 miles an hour in 2023, and that was up from 94 miles an hour in 2022. The thing that really helps with Scooble's fastball is for the second straight season, he was in the 99th percentile in strike percentage with the fastball. He was seen as a two-pitch guy and a guy like Kevin Gosman is kind of the same thing because Gosman throws a ton of his fastballs in the zone and you get that split to get swing and miss that is out of the zone. It has been successful for Scooble as well. The swing and miss pitch for him last season was the changeup. It returned a batting average against of 167 and had a whiff rate of 50.6%. His fastball shape wasn't perfect, but all he did this offseason is add more velocity. He has been up to 100 miles an hour this spring, sitting around 97, and he again is generating a ton of swing and miss. Looking at his percentile rankings, here are the following categories that he was over the 90th percentile in last season. They are expected ERA, expected batting average, chase percentage, strikeout percentage, walk percentage, and barrel percentage. He had a FIP under two, an XFIP lower than his ERA, which is always a good thing, and his whip, again, a .9, was in the 99th percentile. He was really good at keeping the ball in the yard as well, and Comerica Park helps that. I love that he pitches in the AL Central that I think is a pretty weak hitting division, and I have one other guy on this list that is in this division, and the one that I wanted to put on here before that I'll also talk about was also in the AL Central. I think it's kind of weak as well, and there's some good uh, pitcher's park to pitch at, and I love a Turek Skubal this season. Maybe he needs to find a better third pitch, but I think that is in the cards for him, and he will have a sick 2024 season. I want Turek Skubal on my fantasy teams this year. Second player is Cole Reagans of the Royals. His ADP uh, preseason, again, might have changed, was 100. Last year, his record, 7-5, and five, a 3-4-7 ERA. He struck out 113 guys, a whip of 116 in 96 inning. A scout has said that he thinks Cole Reagans is the left-handed version of Jacob deGrom. Reagans was the guy who went the other way in the Arolas Chapman trade last season and turned into one of the best starters in baseball for the second half of the season. This is a Cespedes barbecue tweet from July 30th through the end of last season. It's not the biggest sample size in the world, but Terry Skubal and Cole Reagans ranked one and two in Fangraph's war among starting pitchers in that time. And I think looking at splits isn't a perfect thing, but when you know what these guys did, Scooble coming back from injuries and Reagans becoming a starter, I think these splits are much more important for those two players. And again, Cole Reagans was only a starter for 12 games. So his stats as a starter last season, five and two, he threw 70 and two thirds, his ERA 264. He only gave up 50 hits. He only gave up three home runs. He had 89 strikeouts and a whip of 107. Way better than his full season numbers, obviously. Let's look more into some of the numbers. The fastball is legit. And like Scooble, he has a really good changeup. The one concerning thing is his walk rate. But I hope people aren't too worried about walk rate, as we had Cy Young winner Blake Snell with a walk rate of 13.3%. Reagan's not as bad, still 10.5% walk rate. But if you can still get 
people out. It doesn't matter how they get on base when you have whip in your categories as well. It's the walk or the hit. It's the same thing. It's just not letting those snowball turn into each other. Say you walk two guys and give up a hit. If you're going to walk the guy, who cares if he hits a single or he gets on base by a walk? If you're still going to go punch three guys tickets, it's fine. Uh, we still have to deal with that one whip um, over that inning or figure that out. There's a nice a little wrinkle in StatCast where you can look at pitchers who had similar movement and velocity. And the one that stood out to me for Cole Raggins was Shane McClanahan, who is a guy elite at getting swings and misses. I also love Raggins' slider. It returned a 180 batting average against and had a 40% whiff rate while he was with the Royals. You see pitchers like this uh, gain a ton of steam in the offseason. And Shane McClanahan did this a couple of years prior. I think he is worth it. He had an expected ERA, expected batting average, fastball velocity, whiff percentage, and striker percentage all over the 85th percentile. And those numbers are much better if you only include his time with the Royals. The FIP was great. The XFIP was great. The home run to fly ball percentage was great. And he has a huge swing strike rate. Everything screams by in his profile and I won't go against it. I will be drafting Cole Reagans. This was originally supposed to be a four player video that included Gavin Williams of the Guardians. But Stephen Vaught came out and said that Gavin Williams made an awkward throw during his weighted ball routine and felt some discomfort in his elbow, which got him scratched from his most recent start. He said it was just out of an abundance of caution and Williams should be throwing again in a couple of days, but I haven't seen any more news uh, before I was about to do my write-up on Gavin Williams here. Uh, so I really don't know how serious the injury is, but I want you to know if everything is fine with Gavin Williams and he is back, uh, I love him for this season. And we'll go to the third official player, and that is Taj Bradley of the Tampa Bay Rays. His ADP 273 last season, 5-8, five 5-5-9 eight, five, five, ERA, 129 strikeouts, a whip of 139, and he threw 104.2 innings pitched. Taj Bradley is my bet on advanced analytics play for this year. The counting stats last season were god-awful. I just read them out to you. But Taj is in a system that is super advanced when it comes to developing pitching, and he is still only 22 years old. Let's look at two good things from last year. He had a strikeout rate at 28%, and he has an 85th percentile fastball velocity. The bad, though, pretty much everything else. But I want to look at a couple numbers that show, to me, things will get better. Some of the best predictive stats when it comes to looking at pitchers are XFIP, Sierra and strikeout minus walk percentage. And when we look at Bradley's numbers for last season, those were pretty much the only good numbers he had. He had an XFIP of 380, almost two full runs lower than his ERA. A Sierra, which stands for skill interactive earned run average of 381 and a strikeout minus walk percentage of 19.8%. That is thanks in part to a great uh, strikeout rate, obviously, but those are still really good numbers. If we want to look at his first spring training outing to see how things have changed, he threw his split more, which is a pitch that graded out uh, really well last season. He was able to gain 2.1 miles an hour on it while averaging less spin, which just seems like a cheat code. His already good fastball velocity is up and he is throwing his curveball three miles an hour harder. Looking at some of the stuff plus numbers, everything graded out better than last year. When trying to find the next breakout pitcher, these predictive stats help a lot. And I think this will mean great things for Taj Bradley in 2024. While he's going so late in your drafts, I'm more than willing to take a chance on Taj Bradley with where he is being drafted. Thanks again for watching three must draft pitchers for your teams in fantasy baseball. Uh, let me know other guys you are drafting. Even if it's at the top of the boards, let me know. You guys are all in on this season. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow.